So you mentioned the Rangers not maybe being the team that you thought they'd be. The Rangers were certainly, Julian, front and center in the news cycle uh, mm-hmm. this weekend. This coming on the heels of Friday night, Madison Square Garden. Uh, Rangers were supposed to host their annual Pride Night, a night in which the players were going to uh, go out for warm-ups wearing Pride-themed jerseys. There was going to be uh, kind of rainbow colors on the tapes, uh, tape sticks. Uh, Both of those things were scuttled as the Rangers just came out in warm-ups, regular gear. They still had Pride Night. A lot of the elements that were supposed to be there were there, but a couple of key elements were removed. Uh, The Rangers uh, did put out a statement on the weekend. I'll I'll just read a portion of it here. Um, uh, It says, Our organization respects the LGBTQ plus community. We are proud to bring attention to important local community organizations as part of another a great Pride Night. Uh, the re- statement went on to read, in keeping with our organization's core values, we support everyone's individual right to respectfully express their beliefs, end quote. So why this is important or interesting is that this is now coming off the heels within two weeks of middle of January. The Flyers have their Pride Night in which Ivan Provorov, um, citing his Russian Orthodox faith, uh, that's his rationale for not wearing a Pride sweater during the pregame warmups. And everybody is sitting here saying, where are we at as it pertains to this particular topic? So uh, you and I have not weighed in on this at all. Um, I think it's worth having a, uh, an intelligent, uh, you know, uh, discussion on this. Where, where, where do you want to start? Where, where do you come down on this? How are you, how are you feeling Oof. about where things are at? Uh, The first thing I would like to say is to anyone who is listening to this podcast who hasn't done so already, uh, read the article written by Steve Buckley on uh, the Rangers side of things. It's called uh, Rangers Retreat on Pride Night Sends Somber Message to Younger Closeted Players. And I I read that story a couple of days ago, and it touches off on the fact that, you know, obviously with what's going on... uh, if you are a player in the league or just maybe if you really think about it, you extend it to any athlete in the league who, who may be closeted, uh, you know, this can't, what has gone on with the Rangers and what has gone on with the Flyers can't really sit easy with you. And I guess what's, it's kind of weird because in one frame of mind, you can argue that the reaction to what has transpired with how both teams have handled Pride Night is a sign of progress because as many people care, about LGBTQ issues, or even if you are not part of that community, you still think it's you know worth acknowledging and 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 celebrating. Um, at the same time, I guess because of how progressive we've come as a society with 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 issues and problems that surround them, uh, to see that people will at least be homophobic or or show hate towards that community is a disappointment. And to use religious. I, my my whole thing about it, it bothers me a bit because as someone who considers themselves at least somewhat spiritual and was raised on a foundation of faith, like it's like, I feel like it's like hiding behind religious beliefs is just a little bit of a weird rationale for me because like the same religion, I mean, if you really tie it down to every single religion, they tell you to to love that neighbor and, and, and. And yeah, like it's just it's just a bit weird that like because of your faith, you don't feel you should wear a jersey that has your name and your number in rainbow. Like I just think that's just like a weird rationale to justify to justify faith. And look, it's I just think it's a bit weird in the Kalos of Ivan Provorov. The Rangers thing, I mean, what's weird to what's that to me gives me concern with how other teams might handle it how other people might might handle it or how other people will choose to express their beliefs about that situation like that could open a door to more complications around uh teams handling pride night and and figuring out what they should do because otherwise like it should have just been like a night where you know it's it, it's it's like a, just a small subtle way for teams to show support and now it might turn into essentially a witch hunt like, what if we start looking at other warmups and we're thinking, OK, this guy doesn't have tape or this guy's not wearing a jersey like that's that is that should be completely besides the point. It should just be a subtle way for organizations to show uh, support for 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 those communities. 
But where do you come down? Okay, let, let, and let's go back to Provorov for a second. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. He clearly uh, does not align with that viewpoint, okay? Yeah. Uh, what's the point of forcing him to wear a Pride jersey? Would be, like, to me, at that, like, here's where I come down on this. And I, you know, I, I haven't weighed in on this anywhere. I would Word. like to see teams give players the option of, in a warm-up, if you want to wear the Pride jersey, wear it. You know why? I want to know who the real allies are, Julian. Mm -hmm. I don't want to know who's doing this for performative reasons or doing it because it's mandated. I want to That's know who the point. real, I want to know the real allies. And, and if, and if the Philadelphia Flyers came out for a warm up and everybody came out and one guy wasn't wearing it, I would know who the, who are the allies and who aren't. And if half the team is wearing it half the, I, I want to know the real allies, the people that when push comes to shove, they will stand up for that community or a disenfranchised community or a community like, like and I think, and I, I've put some thought into this over the last couple of weeks. And I thought that's where I come down on this. Um, you know, because I think, I think you and I probably have a lot of similar viewpoints. I'll use Colin Kaepernick as a great example. I was a big Colin Kaepernick guy right in the beginning in 2016. I always believed in an athlete's ability to express themselves. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do I become hypocritical if if I now denounce Ivan Pro? I don't agree with Ivan Provorov. I want to make that very clear. I don't agree with his viewpoint. But then do I become hypocritical if I say, man, you shouldn't have the right to do what other athletes have done, which is use your, use your platform to express yourself. Do I Am I guilty of being hypocritical? And I think in trying to digest this over 10 days or two weeks, I think the answer is yes. So. I will come down on this and I will say, I want to, I want people to be authentic. I don't want athletes to be performative. I don't want them to do this because, oh man, that guy's wearing a jersey. I better wear a jersey. I want you to believe in the cause. I want you to truly be an ally. So if, if, if a handful of New York Rangers players came out and said, we're not comfortable. I don't want to see you coming out and being a fake ally. What, what the hell does that do for us? Tell me. Can you explain to me? How are we further ahead? If Ivan Provorov wore a pride jersey that night, do we magically alter his viewpoint? No. I would be much rather have a, a good, try to engage people with thoughtful conversation and dialogue and education and hope to maybe sway their viewpoint. Um, but I think sometimes this this comes across as like, we want everybody to be on our side of the fence. And I, I think you know this as a person of color, as just as I do. There are going to be racist people out there. There's going to be homophobic people out there. There's going to be misogynistic people. There's going to be all that. There's no magical finish line that we're going to get to it. And we're going to, you and I are going to high five each other, Julian. We, we did it, buddy. Racism is gone. All we Racism can do is, is over. We, all we can do is our best to try and engage people in thoughtful dialogue. I don't think putting a Jersey on, if you don't truly believe in it does anything. I don't think it does. I, I just, can understand like, that viewpoint. You, you, like, I guess let, let's put the shoe on the other foot. Again, I'm going to assume that you probably have a lot of the same viewpoints yeah. kind of socially as, as I do. I, I, I'm making yeah. some assumptions. Okay. Sure. Now let's say there is uh, an NHL game or an NFL. What, pick your sport. And the team has decided that night they're going to honor the local police department. Okay? Which, if, which many teams do. Okay? And they say, in warm-up, we're all going to wear local police department-themed jerseys with our logo and their logo. We're united as one, whatever. Okay? Now, one player on the team is a person of color who says, I'm not doing that because I don't believe in the way that certain police members treat, uh, you know, certain groups and... and would you not applaud that person? I, I mean, I would. I, 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 as as a person of color who, right? I mean, I have to say, like, I'm fortunate that I have not had any negative, uh, or at least not to the point of other people, at least with interactions with the law. But obviously, <laughs> knowing what has happened, I mean, we're coming off a couple of days of from from what happened with Tyree Nichol, Nichols, right? Yeah, with the police officers. Yeah, it, I think if a person of color were to go through something like that, I think they'd have every right to feel that way. But we also know, knowing the sport that we cover, if they were going to do that, the blowback on that would be insane. Insane. 
on that player. And I have to admit, like, that would be very, be very, it would be very, I'd feel for that player because, you know, they would probably be the lone, one of the loneliest players in the world to, to go through something like that because considering how teams, especially in the NHL, uh, have uh, embraced uh, support of, of law enforcement and, and that's their right to do. But yeah. I, 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 to your point, yes, like people should have that right to exercise I, what they feel, yeah. but also at the same time, and I, I'm sure you understand this too, freedom of expression does not come with being, you know, without consequence. Exactly. Right. Like, like 100%. If, if you're, if you're, if you're Ivan Provorov, just like if you're that player who's going to uh, say that they're not down to support this this law enforcement night, you know, uh, you're going to have to come with that blowback. What I also think is very interesting with your example here, too, is uh, it, could you imagine if a player says that they don't want to do this, but the team pushes back, right? Because if, if you're if you're the Flyers and you do what you did, you know, I feel like you kind of op- you open up a door, obviously, for people to be like, well, you know what? If if this team found a way to make it work, like, why can't I do this? So can you imagine? And and I guess we're dealing in hypotheticals right now. Could you imagine if like uh, a player did your example or or if some team look, we're coming up on February? What if some team does a Black Lives Matter thing and someone's like, I'm not doing this like this just. For me, this is this is this could be like a Pandora's box, but, but of my like point, headaches. Yeah, for teams. But this, okay, but it is a Pandora's box. Of it headaches. is. It could easily and, be that, as opposed to people but, just but say, "You know what? Just want, wear your jersey and go on." Do you want a player who doesn't embrace Black Lives Matter to wear a Black Lives Matter shirt? If he, if in his heart he doesn't believe in the cause, do you want him skating out there, walking out there? Um, no, my answer is no. I want the real allies, the real, like, okay, so here, I guess that's why I here's, come back. Here's another counterpoint to that, too. Yeah. And maybe this might come across as more of a generalization than anything else. But I think, compa- by comparison uh, with the NHL to the NBA, the NFL to a certain extent, too, I, I would... And again, it's a bit of a generalization, and I don't think it's that reflective of some of its fans, too. A lot of people like to make assumptions that the NHL is not the most progressive league when it comes to the people in it. There are obviously people in the league who are progressive, but a lot of people like to make that assumption that they're not. If you start getting to a point where you're just like, you know, let the real allies wear the shirts or do their gestures and whatever, I feel like we're going to... I feel like you open yourself up to maybe not disappointment in your case or my case, nope. but I feel like you start opening the door to a lot of people just saying, all right, I'm not doing this. I know, but I, I guess my point at the end of the day, and I would love to be wrong on that point. I would yes. love if NHL players hear this part of this discourse that we're having. And they're like, no, we're actually more progressive than you think. I would love to be wrong on that. I know. And I, I guess where I come down on this is we wrap up this, uh, you know, this, this, this topic here. I just want authenticity out of, Uh, human beings. Um, And I think making somebody uh, wear something when they're not authentically uh, and emotionally involved in something is pointless. It's truly pointless. Like, I don't see the point. I would rather, like I said, give me, if if I find out that eight guys on my team are really staunchly pro, uh, you know, pride night and they want to wear the jerseys, those are the eight guys I'm going to care about more than if all 20 of them wore it, but it turns out 12 of them didn't really, didn't really care. Then you're not sure who the real allies are. Then, Get, then just I, show I, me I, the real allies. I guess the only other way you could do it, you have to find a way to kind of change the way these types of nights go about, where instead of it being a thing where everyone has to wear the same uniform, you really leave it open-ended for everybody. And then you just let the real ones who want to come out with tape or wear the Bingo. jersey or do something special. Yes. I guess that's a really good way to go about it. It's just that because of the way that they're structured now, um, like if if just we the expectation is that everybody wears these shirts and everybody shows that they're that they're about these causes. Cause that's the, I guess that's the best way to do it, you know? Like if if a player wants to 
Like, I, it's cool to see, like, rainbow tape in warm-up. Why not, like, follow through and wear it during a game? Like, wear tape that's good enough to put on your stick to wear it for, to have it for 60 minutes. I don't know. Like, if you find a way to, to kind of shape it in which we look at the people who support these causes a little differently, maybe we could have something. Just right now, especially right now, this minute, like, if we start getting to a point where we want the real allies, it's just going to be at this, like, kind of witch hunt mode where like we're just gonna be looking at who's wearing something who's not wearing something you gotta you gotta you gotta change it around a little bit i i agree with you i i i agree with you there and it you know i think what happens is we live in a society in an age in which things feel very polarized Mm -hmm. right on on either side i think there's more people in the middle willing to have a very intelligent nuanced conversation uh, that's rooted in empathy than we realize. And so we just, we we get into these two camps and we're like, you and us. And then there's actually more people in the middle that are probably more open to how can we support the uh, disenfranchised communities? How do we, how do we be allies for them in a way that's not as divisive? I don't think it has to be this divisive. I don't. It doesn't. But, but also another thing too, we have to consider as well, like, the biggest shame in all this is, especially with Ivan Provorov, like it took away from people who were being real allies, right? Like before, like the, everyone should have been talking about how Scott Lawton and, and James Van Riemsdyk uh, were, were with uh, non-binary fans before the game. Like, yep. like that's that's something else that has to be taken into account, too. Like, because people, especially now, if we get to a point where we're like, hey, let the people who are you know, allies show their true colors and let everyone else not do their thing. And and why it's so important to kind of change the way that we shape that, like because of what Provorov and, and you, maybe you can throw the Rangers in this too. You're taking away from the real work or, or the real ally. Totally. Allyship yep. from, from people around the league who want to show it. Okay. And real quick, just to put a bow on this, imagine the flyers, gave their players the opportunity, the choice. You can wear a regular orange Flyers jersey or a Pride-themed jersey, and they opened the doors, and Scott Lawton and James Van Riemsdyk came out wearing the Pride jerseys. What conversation are we having? We're having a conversation of, look at these two guys using their platform to truly show that they're allies. And guys who have, That's who what have, I want. have been consistent, and guys who have been consistent in that viewpoint for a long time, too. 